Good morning. It's good to be with you on another beautiful day. God has blessed us and we're happy to be able to come and share with you on this uh, day God has given to us. What a great opportunity that we have to continue to worship the Lord together even though we're not in person. I'm hoping that uh, maybe this will be the last of these that we will do for a while and maybe forever, I hope. And uh, But it is good to be able to have this way of communicating and sharing with you and helping us stay together as a church family. I'll be so glad when we can all get back together, and I know you will be, the, you're the same way. Uh, it has been really something else, all this that has been going on. But in the meantime, we, we're learning a lot, and we're continuing to serve the Lord and continue to be faithful and to watch over one another the way the Lord wants us to. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew, the fifth chapter. We have been studying the Beatitudes for the last several weeks, and uh, we're going to jump back in to the Beatitudes again today as we study God's Word. What an opportunity we have to jump in there and to learn and to let God speak to our hearts. But the Beatitudes are at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. As you are aware, the Sermon on the Mount is recorded by Matthew in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. And uh, this is the teachings of Jesus. And he begins the Sermon on the Mount with these Beatitudes, or the description of the life that is truly blessed. The Greek word makarios that is used at the beginning of these Beatitudes, the word blessed, means, oh, how happy is the person. And so here we find the road to true happiness in our relationship with the Lord and also in our relationship with one another. When Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment in Scripture? He said, the first is this, you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. And then he said, the second is likened to it, you're to love your neighbor as yourself. And so as we love the Lord, we are also to love one another. And you cannot divorce these two elements from our Christian life. We love the Lord and we also love one another. And these Beatitudes describe our relationship with God and then how we're to relate to one another. And just a quick review, you remember that the Beatitudes begin with the beginning point of our relationship with the Lord. We come to the Lord with a humble heart. We come to the Lord with the awareness of our spiritual need, that we're spiritually bankrupt, and that we need a Savior. And when we come to that place in our lives, we're ready to open up our hearts and receive God's mercy, His grace, and His forgiveness. And when we realize that what God has done for us is what we could not do for ourselves. It leads us to a humble and grateful heart. And Jesus talks about, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's amazing when we come to Christ. Everything in life changes. The whole perspective of our lives change as we begin to see our lives and the lives of others and the world around us from God's perspective. And so Jesus talks about entering the Christian life. Well, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And we want to know Him more and more every day to grow in our relationship with Him. There's a hunger and a thirsting for a right relationship with God in our lives. And as we hunger and thirst for the Lord and as we seek Him, not just to know about Him, but to know Him in His fullness, we have the satisfaction of knowing that God speaks to our hearts and He gives us even greater revelations of Himself through His Word through the testimony of others, through the church, through our circumstances, we begin to see God at work all around us. And so these first few Beatitudes deal with entering the Christian life and then growing in our relationship with Christ. Now these next Beatitudes deal with the character that's developed in our lives because we have come to know Jesus. The first of these is the characteristic of mercy. We talked about blessed are the merciful just a couple of Sundays ago. We talked about the fact that we have received God's mercy means that we extend God's mercy to others. I'm like you in, in that I love God's mercy. I love His grace. I love the fact that if I confess my sin, that He's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's the grace of God who doesn't deal with me according to my sin, but according to his mercy. That's God's grace. But then I'm called to extend that same grace to others and to forgive others even as God has forgiven me. 
And so mercy becomes a great characteristic of those who know Christ because the grace that we have received is the grace that we extend. And that gracious spirit leads to a purity of heart. And last time we talked about blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We talked about personal purity, the unadulterated motives of the heart. That is a heart that is clean and pure and wholesome before the Lord. The psalmist said, who may ascend to the holy hill? And he said, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. And we realize that purity of heart results from walking with the Lord, keeping our lives clean before him, confessing our sin, asking God to do his work in our lives. The psalmist said, thy word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against God. And so purity in heart, pure motives, one desire to glorify God, to do his will, his way, and, and, and to fulfill his purpose in our lives. And so we have this purity of heart. But now we come to verse 9 of chapter 5, and this beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. A gracious heart, a merciful attitude, a, a, a desire for purity in one's life leads to this next beatitude, and that is the desire to be a peacemaker. To know the peace of God is to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When we think about peace in the New Testament, peace was used, the word peace was used in a lot of different ways. Uh, it was used as a greeting. Uh, the Hebrews would gre greet one another with the words shalom. And that just means, how are you doing? I hope things are well with you. Uh, we might greet one another and say, well, we hope you're doing okay. And the Jewish people would greet one another with the greeting, Shalom, we hope all is well with you. But when you look at the word peace in the Bible, it means a sense of completeness, a sense of wholeness, the sense of the fullness of the fulfillment in life. And so when Jesus talks about peace, he's talking about a deep and abiding confidence that we have in God. And so when we think about blessed are the peacemakers, there are three aspects of this that we need to consider. First is peace with God and how to have peace with God. The next is to have that internal abiding peace that gives us security and hope regardless of what the situations might be. And then the third aspect of that is extending that peace or living in peace with others and what that means. So let's just divide it up into those three areas. First, if you're gonna have peace in your heart, it starts with having peace with God. God is the peacemaker. And Jesus himself referred to himself often as the Prince of Peace. He came to extend God's peace to those who were burdened with the burden of sin. He came to give hope in the midst of hopelessness and to give security in the midst of insecurity. And so when we think about being a peacemaker, we have to think about first having peace with God. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. Paul says it will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But peace with God is found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All of these beatitudes have built one upon the other. And, and Jesus starts out talking about how to enter into a relationship with God realizing our spiritual need, coming before the Lord with a brokenness because of the sin in our lives, receiving God's grace, His mercy in our lives that leads to a humble and grateful heart. And then that hungering and thirsting after God to not just know about Him, but to know Him in all His fullness. And so this beatitude backs up just a little bit and it says, you know, if you're going to have peace in your life, it's got to start out with having peace with God. And, and maybe the best commentary on that is found in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And in those verses, Paul talks about God demonstrating his love for us. I'm turning there in my Bible. You can turn there in your Bible to Romans chapter 5. In, in those first few verses there, he says this, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And that peace comes through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained an introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand 
and we exult in the hope of the glory of God. Not only this, but we also exult in tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, Paul in Romans is talking about how we come into a right relationship with God. And he says, we come by faith. We come trusting what God has done for us in Christ. And he talks about being justified by faith, that is being made right with God. And he says, when we come to Christ and we give him our hearts, we open our lives to him, then God fills our hearts with his peace. The, the, the difficulties are gone as far as separating us from God. And God has established peace in our hearts. Now, another passage of Scripture is found in Ephesians chapter 2 that goes along with this. Listen to what Paul says. This is where we were before we came to Christ. He said, You were dead in your trespasses and sins, and whence you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. You see, peace with God comes from coming to Christ. That God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. When Jesus died on the cross, he took our sin, our guilt, the punishment that we deserve, He took it upon Himself and gave His life for us so that when we come to, to Christ and we give our hearts to Him, then God fills our lives with His peace. And the peace that God gives us is something the world can never give us and the world can never take away. Do you know this peace? of God in your life, if you come to the place where you've given your heart to Christ and you know the peace that only God can bring. So when you think about blessed are the peacemakers, the first key is you've got to have peace with God. And God has done everything necessary for us to experience the peace of His forgiveness and the glory of His grace. And so that's where it starts. But when we have peace with God like this, it creates a deep and inner peace within us. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus says. They have peace with God, but they also have a deep and abiding peace within their own hearts. Now, as I thought about how to define the peace of God that we have in our hearts, it, it is a peace that, that is there no matter what the circumstances might be. There are those who say, well, once you come to Christ, you'll never have any more problems. Everything's going to be great in your life. You'll never have any other issues. Well, we know better than that. We know that we're still living in a real world, and we're going to face real world issues. There will be problems. There will be challenges. There will be times of difficulties. As For instance, even today I had a text from a young man who went to work this morning and found out that he no longer had a job. Well, he's in turmoil right now because what in the world is he going to do? He has a family, has a baby on the way. What is he going to do? Well, we have times like that in our lives and times of difficulty. We're experiencing those times every day. But in the midst of those things, we can have a deep and abiding peace. So let's define that peace. I define that peace as having confidence in the Lord because we have confidence in the Lord. We know that our God is going to take care of us no matter what happens. There's an old song that says that God will make a way when there seems to be no way. And, and He does. I've seen God do that in my life. You've probably experienced that in your life as well. But we have confidence in God. We have confidence that God is a God of providence. That God is the one who's directing our lives. 
The providence of God means that he is in control. There are a lot of people who believe in luck and believe in fate and all those kinds of things. I don't believe in those things. I believe in God who is watching over my life and he's directing my path. This, the writer of Proverbs said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own, uh, on, on your own knowledge, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so I have confidence in God that God is directing my life and that he is in control. Now I have to remind myself of that very often. You probably do too. In the political atmosphere in which we're living today and, the, and, and all the things that are going on with COVID and Afghanistan and all of those issues that are so bold right there in front of us, we have to come back to the reality and realization that God is in control and that we can trust him even when we don't understand maybe we can still trust God because God is at work in our lives. And it's not for our harm, but for our good. And so peace with God may, means that I trust God's providence. It also means this, that I trust God's protection and his provision. Psalm 23 is one of the most familiar scriptures in all the Bible. Most everybody knows Psalm 23. But there's a little verse sandwiched in there that is so powerful about the peace of God. And it says this, even though, now hear that, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod, your staff, they're there to comfort me. And besides that, you're preparing a table before me and the presence of my enemies. In other words, God is taking care of us. And when we have the peace of God, not only do we trust his peace, providence we trust the fact that God is watching over us he's taking care of us he's providing for our needs he's meeting us where we are and he's loving us and he's there to help us and to sustain us several years ago I did a real detailed study through the book of Jeremiah and Jeremiah was known as a weeping prophet well I've come to the conclusion that he was one of the most bold men that I have ever experienced he was not a weeping prophet. He was a man that was bold before the Lord, yet he had confidence that he could pour out his heart before God. Well, he also wrote Lamentations. And Lamentations is, is, is really a book of sorrow. It's, it's a book of reflection. It's a book of looking back and seeing the hard things that had happened. And, and surely Jeremiah shed tears over those things that had happened. He tried to prevent, but he couldn't. The people wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen to him. They wouldn't listen to God. But he says in the middle of chapter 3, he says, you know, I found out something. I've been through a lot in my life, but I have found this to be true, that God is absolutely faithful. He said his faithfulness, his grace is new every morning. We have a hymn in our hymn book that is written based on that scripture in Lamentations chapter 3. And that song is, Great is thy faithfulness. When we know God's faithfulness, we have a peace in our hearts that we know that God is going to protect us, God's going to watch over us, and God's going to meet every need that we have. Now, I have no way of knowing what might be going on in your life. I don't know what the issues might be. I don't know what your challenges might be. I don't know what's going on in your family. I don't know all of those things, but what I do know is this, that God is bigger than any of those. And you can trust the Lord and keep your eyes on Him, and you will experience God's peace even in the midst of those difficulties. And I found this to be true in my life. Usually in the times of the greatest difficulties in my life are the times that I've grown the most spiritually. But I've also discovered this. Sometimes what looks like the end is not the end at all. It is absolutely a new beginning. And God specializes in new beginnings. Maybe you need one today. And that new beginning is turning your heart to Christ, experiencing His peace in your life, and then walking with the Lord who loves you, who will guide you and protect you and meet the needs in your life. That's where we are. And so when we have that peace in our hearts, the peace of knowing God 
and the peace of knowing that God is with us, that God is directing us, that God is providing for us, that God is taking care of us. When we have that peace in our hearts, then we're able to take the next step, and that is to be a peacemaker. The peace of God in our hearts expresses itself outwardly. And it expresses itself outwardly to the lives of others as we extend God's peace to others. Well, how are we to be peacemakers? Let me just suggest a couple of things. The first is this. We become peacemakers by sharing the gospel, by sharing the true message of peace. And that message of peace is summed up in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is summed up in Romans 6, 23 that says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, there's two choices there. You can have the wages of sin, which is death, or you can take the gift. And that gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that results in God's peace and so we share that message. We read from Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrated His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the key to peace. And we share the gospel. And we share with those who are looking for that which will bring ultimate wholeness, fulfillment, peace into their lives. There's only one who can do that, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we become peacemakers by sharing the gospel and extending God's message of salvation so that those who hear may come to know Christ and experience His peace in their lives. We become peacemakers by helping people, by ministering to people where they are. We can be peacemakers by, with a listening ear, with a grateful heart, with an opportunity to extend to others uh, to meet their needs. For instance, over these past few days, uh, we have been receiving supplies for the, the hurricane victims. And it's been wonderful to watch our churches come together and bring different items that people need. Things like toothpaste and toothbrushes and, and, and paper towels and, and food and water and all kinds of things that people need that have lost everything through this recent hurricane. And, and as I look at all that that's in my office and we've already taken two loads of supplies down to Louisiana to meet, to minister to those people, it's a blessing. And in the midst of that difficulty, we're bringing those items to them, but we're doing it with this in heart, this in heart in mind, that is, you're not alone. We're here with you. We're here to help you. So you don't have to worry. You can be at peace because there's some peacemakers here who love you and care about you and are here for you. You see, we extend God's peace in that way. We also become peacemakers when we defend those who are helpless. When we stand in the gap for those who are hurting or in need or those who are being abused even, we say, you're not gonna do that. And we stand in the gap and we become peacemakers in the sense of watching over others in brotherly love. Not only do we experience this peace, but we extend this peace to others. I believe that the church has a wonderful opportunity, especially now with all this going on, to extend God's peace, His grace to others, and to show others that wholeness or completeness or fulfillment in life is not found in a bunch of stuff. It's found only in a relationship with the Lord. Now there's the other side of this equation. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. What does that mean, the sons of God? Or the children of God? They will be called the children or the sons of God. To the Hebrew, sonship meant likeness, obedience, and mission. It means those three things. So when we become peacemakers, we become like the Lord because He is the ultimate peacemaker. He's also the ultimate keep peacekeeper. And when we grow in our character to become more like Him, then we begin to reflect His glory, and part of His glory is His peace. 
And so likeness, obedience, as we follow the Lord obediently, we reach out and touch the lives of others, then we extend His peace in meaningful ways. And then likeness, obedience, and mission. Our mission is to extend His peace and to share the message of peace with everyone that we meet. And so Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You can see how these beatitudes, one build on the other. The more we become like Jesus, the more Christ-like we become, the more compassionate, the more gracious, the more loving, the more kind, the more gentle. Oh, the more we will extend God's peace to the lives of others. So Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. One question is left, and then we'll pray. And uh, that one question is this, well, am I a peacemaker? Is God using you to extend His grace and His peace to the lives of others? Let's pray together. Our Father, thank you, God, for the opportunity to share. We pray, God, that you will bless this message and you'll use it to encourage our hearts. And, Father, for us to take it and use it and extend your grace to others. And, Father, that others will experience the peace of Jesus that will guard their hearts and minds. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being involved this morning. And I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.